Yes, I'll try to be better about that in the future. You can scream and shout with all your might. Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and motherfucking moan. Dig in your heels and hold on tight. You can shove your opinion up your ass, that way Hillary Clinton's cock has something to keep it company. Don't forget, the ever-present, the most likely, the only possibility, Hillary Clinton will be the next president of the United States. And the left-wing statists go crazy at this news because they're so excited for the impending reign of Hillary Clinton, the second President Clinton. Meanwhile, you're also excited for stating the obvious podcast, The Weapons Platform, in which I launched the cruise missile of my intellect. Homes in on it, destroy stupid motherfucking statist all around the world, all over the place. It's fucking wherever you see a statist, they're dead once they impact with this podcast. Occasionally there's a survivor, but we mow them down with the M. But the, not the M, the 50 caliber machine gun. I was going to say the M50 machine gun. As far as I know, there's no such thing. There's an M60 machine gun. Of course, I don't think the military really uses M60s and M16s anymore. I think they're trying to phase those out. I, mean, I don't know. I don't keep up on this stuff. All right. Greetings. Today's the same day as I recorded Stating the Obvious 241. You might want to go back and listen to that one first because I'm picking up where I left off. We're going to jump right in and we're going to try, I'm going to attempt, well, we all know how that goes, I'm going to attempt to complete my discussion of this book in this podcast so we don't have to make part three. So all the normal stuff, cynlibsoc.com on the internet, God, dog spelled backwards, G-O-D at cynlibsoc.com for email, cynlibsoc on the Twitterverse, I am the great one himself, I'm right, I'm always right, I've never been wrong, go fuck yourself if you don't like it, in the control room over there, lovely and adorable Randy, looking cute, and yes, so here it is, it's the 13th of, what month was this, it's, is it still July, has it been July all day long, okay, great, it's July, who gives a shit? The lessons on this podcast are timeless. Okay, I see I'm already unfocusing. All right, Marissa Mayer. Meyer? Mayer? Was I mispronouncing her name earlier? Was I calling her Mayer? I don't know. Who gives a fuck? Mayer, Mayer, Mayer. Marissa Mayer and the Fight to Save Yahoo by Nicholas Carlson. That's the book we're reading from and discussing. Where are my notes? Page 262. Again, I want to say it's a real... I just wrapped it up. I just, we, I wanted to finish the day, finish this today. So I sat down and finished reading the book. Again, it's a very readable book, very enjoyable. If you like reading about corporations and CEOs and fuck ups, and I think this is important for two reasons at least. There may be more, but here's two reasons offhand. I think it's good for you to read books like this, especially if you're a young person, right? Old people, who gives a fuck? But young people, first of all, you may end up working at one of these corporations in your future, providing, of course, you can find a job now that Obama has saved the economy and everything like that. Right now, outside the studios of the Cynical Libertarian Society, you might hear them coming through the open window. There's no dogs barking. Thank God there's no fucking lawnmowers. (sighs) But you might occasionally hear the kids out there. They're having a little get-together. They're college kids. You know, in a couple of years, they're going to graduate, and they're going to find out life isn't like it was in college, also known as high school version two. And they're going to have to get jobs. And a lot of them are going to get jobs at corporations. And the corporations are going to treat them the way the Yahoo employees got treated, get treated, and I'm going to read you some stuff about that in the book. So so as a young person, it's important for you to understand that the corporations don't give a fuck about you. This, the purpose of a corporation is to make money for the shareholders. That's the ultimate goal. I know you think the company cares about you and HR is your friend and all this other, none of this shit is true. The company ultimately does not give a fuck about you. And some people have to learn that the hard way, 
but some people could learn that by reading books like this one. Another reason young people should read this book and other books like it is because you may, instead of working for a corporation and <clears throat> having your soul destroyed, you might choose to start your own business, which is a smart thing to do. And reading books like this is great because you can read about other people's mistakes and if you're smart, you can learn from other people's mistakes. Now, of course, the mistakes of Yahoo aren't going to directly translate to something you're doing because the creation and evolution of Yahoo is all this very specific thing tied to a specific circumstances and a specific time and all this other stuff. But you can learn in general from other people's fuck ups you can learn from this stuff, and it's important to do that if you're going to try to create anything out of your life. All right, here we go. Page 262. Now, this, I am almost certain I talked about this in a earlier episode of Stating the Obvious. And this is when Marissa Meyer told the employees who work at home they couldn't work at home anymore. They had to come into the office. And I'm pretty sure that I made fun of this for environmental reasons because you got people driving. And I'm pretty sure I said something about how, see, this is a woman. She can't give up control. She wants to micromanage everybody. And I'm sure that I ragged on her because my knowledge of the incident was that, you know, she did this. And so I'm thinking, okay, so there's all these employees working at home doing shit that you can do from home. It's just computer coding. And why the fuck should they have to come to the office, spend part of their life driving to the office, shit, yada, 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 in order to write some fucking computer code? This is stupid. Okay. Then, because and this was ba this, so this brings us to an, another important point for me to make, is be careful when you, just like a couple episodes ago, remember, I talked about the study about... The more money you spend on a marriage, the more likely it is to fail, which actually really ties in to the video I talked about very briefly in the previous episode, and I linked to it in the show notes, the MGTO video done by the guy whose name I don't remember now, talking about what happens when a woman hits the wall. Yeah. Yes, Randy, I know this has nothing to do with Marissa. Well, no, this does have something to do with Marissa Meyer, because Marissa Meyer is hitting the wall already. So it's kind of related, just... Chill, chill, woman, chill. Just bend over and look cute or something, all right? What was I talking about? The wall. The video. The wall video. How the fuck did this relate to anything? God damn it. Look, if you want me to do this episode and us to get finished, you can't interrupt me. Because now I've completely lost my fucking train of thought. You, well, you're supposed to remember where I was. That's what you're here for. I almost said that's what I pay you for, but I don't pay you. I pay you with my company. All right, anyway, nobody wants to hear that. What the fuck was I going to say? The wall. Fuck it, it'll come to me. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm sure it was not important. Nothing I say ever is. All right, so anyway... <laughs> Anyway. Oh, the marriage, the marriage, the marriage. Okay, so the more money you spend on the wedding, the more likely you are to get divorced. That's where it was at. So how does this relate to the wall? As he talks about in this video about the wall, women who ride the cock carousel are doing this because riding the cock carousel gives them access to a greater amount of resources. So if you're fucking, if you're a woman and you're fucking a man, that man has 24 hours in a given day that he can give you attention. Now, if you're a woman and you're riding the cock carousel, let's say that you're fucking three men at the same time. Each man has 24 hours in the day. That gives you a grand total of 72 hours of male attention and obedience that you can have access to in a 24-hour period. And thus, when a woman who rides the cock carousel gets married, 
she's which we've seen women the more sex partners a woman have the more likely they are to get divorced statistics have shown that so when she gets married she finds that she's going to find that one man who only has 24 hours in a day cannot fulfill her desire for attention and validation the way that three men with 72 hours between them could and that's what leads to the divorce it's the same thing with the marriage, right? The more money you spend on the woman up front, that's an indicator. The harder she is, that, that's, that's an indicator that she will be more difficult to satisfy as you go down the road. Because once you've blown a giant wad on this extravagant wedding, she's going to want that level of attention and validation to continue. Now, I'm not sure, well, it kind of relates to Marissa Meyer because she's hitting the wall and she wants validation. Anyway, so, where are we? We're 11 minutes into the cast? Great, let's get started. Here we go, page 262. Anyway, in... <laughs> no, now I remember why I was talking about that. Jesus, fuck. My brain is like a fucking sieve. So, when I talked about that study, you remember that I read to you the newspaper-ish article. I mean, it's off the internet. I still call it a newspaper article because that's the level of journalism third grade reading level journalism and then I went straight to the source the actual study itself as written up by the researchers because it's important and I did this partially to illustrate what a actual research study looks like and sounds like but also to get the information straight from the source now with the Marissa Meyer you have to come work at home thing my initial knowledge of this incident was based on what was written by you know, somebody with a journalism degree, <laughs> journalism degree, somebody with a journalism degree writing on the internet for a third grade reading level. Now, in this book, Marissa Meyer and the Fight to Save Yahoo by Nicholas Carlson, which you should read because it's a very well written book and very interesting, here is the story with a little more detail to it. And remember, what my opinion of this when I heard it was I, I attacked Marissa Meyer. I said she was matriarchy. I said she didn't care about the environment. I called her names. All sorts of shit. So that was my initial reaction based upon the evidence I had. Let me talk one more time as I like to do. Don't make faces at me, Randy, about why I am the great one and you're not. Let me explain to you one more time why you have the worldview of an eight-year-old child and I am a fucking adult. Because when I am confronted, when I encounter, when I access additional, greater information than I had before that gives me a new perspective, I am capable of changing my worldview to match the information. You can't do that because you're a fucking statist. For the life of you, you can't figure out how anybody, other than the government, could possibly build a road. Because roads are so amazingly complicated. It's this flat place on the ground where they put some asphalt, and then they take paint, and they put some little lines on it. And, well, fuck, that is so complicated, no one could do that except the government. And your worldview your inability to alter your worldview in response to information means that you will never be able to outgrow that belief because you're a dumb, filthy, piece of shit statist and you should be exterminated. Now, let's get to the book. At the end, of February 2013, Jackie Reese's sent a memo, and I'll just say right now, I'll say it one time for everybody's name that I mutilate while trying to read this book. I'm not mutilating anybody's names intentionally. I will insult you, but I'm not going to insult anybody in the book, any of these people, by mutilating their names intentionally. It's just because English is my first language and I don't know how to fucking speak or pronounce words. Okay. At the end of February 2015, Jackie Reese sent a memo to everyone in the company asking employees to cease working from home. It read, Yahoo's. 
Over the past few months, we have introduced a number of great benefits and tools to make us more productive, effective, and fun. With the introduction of initiatives like FYI, Goals, and PB&J, we want everyone to participate in our culture and contribute to the positive momentum. From Sunnyvale to Santa Monica, Ballin... Bangalore to Beijing, I think we can all feel the energy and buzz in our offices. To become the absolute best place to work, communication and collaboration will be important, so we need to be working side by side. That is why it is critical that we are all present in our offices. Some of the best decisions and insights come from hallway and cafeteria discussions, meeting new people, and impromptu team meetings. Speed and quality are often sacrificed when we work from home. We need to be one Yahoo, and that starts with physically being together. Beginning in June, we're asking all employees with work-from-home arrangements to work in Yahoo offices. If this impacts you, your management has already been in touch with next steps. And for the rest of us who occasionally have to stay home for the cable guy, please use your best judgment in the spirit of collaboration. Being a Yahoo isn't just about your day-to-day -day job. It is about the interactions and experiences that are only possible in our offices. Thanks to all of you, we've already made remarkable progress as a company, and the best is yet to come. Jackie. Hang on a second. Turning on the light. I have the blinds open so that I can see the cute college girls, and there, there's a couple of hot ones. I, I, the one in the green shirt, I think I'd fuck the shit out of her. But the sun is going down, so I need some light in here. The work-from-home ban was polarizing at Yahoo, but much more so in the media outside the company. Professional women seemed particularly upset. Working from home was a convenient way for many of them to continue their careers after giving birth. Why was Marissa, why was Meyer taking such a stance against it? Okay, first of all, let's look at the problem. First of all, that memo was actually, again, keep in mind, the corporation ultimately does not give a fuck about you. I know some of you don't believe that, but it's true. Overall, however, that memo was pretty nicely worded, and it made some sense. Now, this is the, here we have the, the whole woman in the workplace thing, right? Well, I want to stay home and work while all the men go to the office because I want a baby and a career. You don't get a fucking baby in a career. I know you women fucking think you can do that. I know that's your goddamn fucking you go girl Oprah fueled fantasy. You do not get, you can have a baby, but you're going to be pawning it off on somebody else to raise. This thing, I want to stay work at home and raise my child. No, you, you want to fucking have a job here? You either do like the men, you gender equality, you get your fucking cunt ass into the fucking office and you do your job just like the men do. Or you stay home, you fucking take your shoes off, you get in the kitchen, and you raise the fucking child. You don't get both, okay? You don't get both. I know that hurts your fucking feelings. I don't give a fuck. Gender equality. You get one or you get the other. You don't fucking get both. So professional women who want to stay at home and have a career and a child, go fuck yourselves. All of you, go fuck yourselves. Inside Yahoo, now this is where it really gets interesting. Inside Yahoo, the ban affected 164 people in a 15,000 person company. Now, when I read about this from the journalism majors writing for a third grade reading level audience, I never ran across the figure that the ban only affected 164 people out of 15,000. Remember that rant I just went on about how women need to either fucking have a kid or get their bitch asses to the office? So if you have 15,000 people, hold on, I'm going to engage in patriarchy. Watch this, I'm going to do math patriarchy. I'm oppressing a woman. I'm doing subtraction right now. Women are being oppressed. 
Because I am doing math. Because remember, math was created to keep women down. Right now, a woman is making 75 cents on the dollar because I'm doing math. 164 people were working from home. 14,836 people were coming to the motherfucking office. Suddenly, I find myself having much less sympathy for these people working, making air quotes that you can't see because this ain't a video, it's a podcast. I had a commenter on YouTube going, why isn't there more video? What is this, a podcast? I'm like, yes, dumb motherfucker. It's a fucking podcast, you fucking retard. I'm making a little air quote. You got 164 people working from home while 14,836 are coming to the goddamn office. Suddenly, I have no fucking sympathy for the 164. I don't. I lost when I read this. It's like, you know what? Marissa Meyer made a good call on this one as far as I'm concerned. I completely reverse my previous statements that I made on this topic. She made a good call. Let me keep reading. Many of them worked nowhere near a Yahoo office. Yahoo told them they either had to move to be near enough to an office so they could come in every day, or they would have to find a new job. That's, again, if you work for a corporation, if you work for a company, if you work for a mom and a pop business, if you work for anyone else, they get to call the shots. That's how this fucking works. This is why you should be working on starting your own business. Okay? Yahoo said it would pay for their moving expenses and even give them a raise to cover increases in cost of living from rural to urban and suburban areas. That sounds pretty fucking reasonable to me. Aside from those 164, the ban was most annoying for Yahoo's managers. Aw, oh, the management people had to do some work. Who, in the months leading up to its enforcement, had to go over every remote employee's circumstances and review whether an exception could be made. First of all, I have no sympathy for middle management. Second of all, there's only 164 people. How it took you months to do that? It was particularly tough for Yahoo's media organization, which had writers all over the country. Now, media writers, if these are writers like go out and, and do research or cover events or something like that, see, I, now that I can almost understand. That's a little bit different from, say, somebody who writes computer code. If you're going out and you have to physically be in places, not the office, to do your job, like you have to go to an event and then come back and write about it. Now see, that's a little different. I can handle that. That makes more sense for working at home. But based on the information I have in this book, I don't know exactly what's going on or the breakdown, like how many of these 64 were these writers and what exactly do these writers do? How many of these 164 were coders? Yada, yada, yada. So, see, so you notice when I have incomplete information, I say so and I don't make stupid opinions and then embarrass myself by having to come back later and say, hey, remember when I made fun of Marissa Meyer for making everybody work at home? Well, now that I have more information, I'm wrong about that. See, I would never do that. I would never read some third grade reading level shit written by a fucking journalist on the internet and draw a conclusion from it. No, that would never happen. And this is why you can't fucking believe everything you read on the motherfucking internet. Because I know you think it's on the internet. Well, it must be. I typed it into Google. This is the first thing that came up. It must be true. Go fuck yourself. All right. Most employees thought the ban was smart if tough and poorly messaged. I don't think it was poorly messaged at all. Again, for a corporate memo coming from some bigwig bitch who doesn't actually interact with the little people, that was not a badly written memo, in my opinion. Of course, I don't fucking get my feelings hurt every goddamn time somebody breathes. I don't need a fucking safe space. Still, wait, how far am I supposed to read on this? To page 264, okay. Most employee, oh. 
read that. Still, Meyer felt she had to address the controversy at an FYI on March 1st, 2013. The FYI, that's a thing that they did at Google, apparently, and Marissa Meyer implemented it at Yahoo, where every Friday she would go up in front of everyone. They'd all gather in the cafeteria, and she would fill them in on what was going on and give out employee awards and talk about news and field some questions and all this other sort of stuff. She argued that Yahoo was in the middle of an all-hands-on-deck moment. At that meeting, she allowed that if an employee's kid was sick or they needed to wait for the cable guy or a package, working from home for a day or so was fine. And again, that seems... So she's telling... Yeah, perfectly reasonable. Yeah, you so your kid's sick or you're waiting for... A, yeah, work from home that day. That's perfectly reasonable. And again, for a corporation... Remember, you're working for a corporation. They're giving you money. That means they own you for a portion of your life. That's why they're giving you money, because they expect you to do things that you don't want to do. That's why they have to pay you, right? That's why I we've discussed this before. That's why it's called a job. That's why it's work. Nobody will pay me to jack off to internet porn, because that's something I want to do. Nobody will pay me to do this podcast, although they should, because this is something I want to do. The point was to get rid of long-term awkward arrangements, like instances where whole teams worked in the office for managers who were remote. Again, that's pretty reasonable. If you've got a bunch of people in the office and their manager is working remotely, no! Dude, you want to manage these people? Get your fucking ass to the office. That seems perfectly goddamn reasonable to me. Then she launched into a story about how much hard work it had took for Steve Jobs to turn Apple around. I'm sick of Steve Jobs references. It just, in general, go fuck yourself, Steve Jobs. Oh yeah, you're dead. Thank God. She said it was going to be just as hard or harder to save... <laughs> she said hard. <laughs> she said hard <laughs> it's going to be just as hard or <laughs> harder alright sorry mm. I don't know why that's suddenly giving me the giggle sorry alright be just as hard or harder to save Yahoo it was an anti-whining, toughen-up message. Quote, I'm really excited about what we're all here to do, but we all do need to be really honest that it's going to be hard work. At the end of the quarter, Yahoo employees voted to make Meyer's message of the ban one of the lowlights she had to present to the board. So she also did this thing, she implemented this, where every quarter she, Marissa Meyer, would do a presentation, maybe she still does, I don't know what's going on right now. She did a presentation to the board of directors, and in it she would feature the highlights and the lowlights of the previous quarter as voted upon by the employees. So that's what's referring, that's what is, that is what that is referring to when it says the Yahoo employees voted to make the ban one of the lowlights she had to present to the board. That frustrated Meyer a bit. She wasn't sure what else she could have done other than saying she thought it was the right thing for Yahoo right now and that it had nothing to do with the world outside the company. Also, she believed the ban was desperately needed. Of those 164 employees, one of those 164 employees was busted for not working for a couple of weeks in a row. He lived in Tahoe. When he was called out on it, he said... Haven't you seen the snow report? The snow has been awesome. This is one more reason why I fucking hate people who are all into skiing and snowboarding. Because the snow falls and they become these worthless pieces of shit who think they shouldn't have to come to work because, oh, it's snowing outside, so I want to go skiing. So anyhow, there's, there's that. I, again, I completely, based on this new evidence... 
that I have. I completely agree with, not that, you know, Marissa Meyer doesn't fucking call me up for my approval, but I agree with and approve of the course of action she took in that regard. I think it was a smart thing to do. Get your fucking asses into the office or get another job. Suck a great big dick if you don't like it. I mean, and these people, none of these people are underpaid. This book often repeats how engineers and people at Yahoo were way overpaid compared to, because in the early days they had a lot of money and then things started going bad, but they wanted to keep the good talent, so they threw a lot of money at the good talent so the good talent wouldn't leave. So what ended up happening is when Marissa Meyer showed up, she had a whole lot of people who were getting paid way more than their peers at other companies. So yeah, I mean, you want that money? You want to work at Yahoo? Then, then fucking suck it up. Come to the office. All right, let's move on. Page 270. Where am I at here? Page break to 273. Page break. All right. Randy, there's no way in hell we're going to get this in in one podcast. I'm just letting you know. You can shoot me later. We'll record part three probably Friday morning, unless we find some time between now and then. Because I got, I got gigs the next three days. I don't know how that's going to work out. Maybe, oh shit, no, tomorrow night's boozing night. May, maybe Wednesday or Thursday night, I'll let you know. All right, we're on page 270. In the middle of all this, Marissa Meyer had a kid. One minute, she was in a Saturday afternoon meeting with executives from Microsoft, insisting that they update Yahoo's search features as often as Bing's. The next, she was in labor. On September 30th, 2012, Meyer gave birth to a baby boy for work for weeks. Mayer and her husband, investor Zachary Borg, called their child only BBBB for Big Baby Boy Bogue. They would eventually name him McAllister. BBBB. I just. I read that only because of how pathetic I think that is. It took you. For weeks. It took her weeks to figure out the kid's name. Don't you have to give the kid a name before you leave the fucking hospital for the birth certificate? I don't know. I've never had a baby, but fucking Christ. Meyers, Mayer's pregnancy <laughs> had been a fascination of the media. Women around the world and plenty of her Yahoo co-workers. Yes, because women are fascinated with pregnancy. Because many women still understand that everything about them revolves around their vagina. The only thing that makes them special is the fact that they can pop out a baby. Except, of course, that popping out a baby actually isn't special because most of the 3.5 billion women on the planet can pop out a baby. There are a few women that are naturally sterile for whatever reason. But most women can make a baby, and yet still, women, their whole fucking existence revolves around the hole between their legs. And they'll claim it doesn't, but it does. And as somebody, who the fuck was it? I think it was Matt Forney, wrote in one of his columns, a woman has a hole between her legs, and she's always looking for something to fill it. And that's either a baby or a cock. And if there's not something in that hole... She is incomplete. That's why all these women in the media and all these women around are all obsessing over Marissa Meyer's baby. Because they're looking at her, oh, she's a CEO. She's going to have a kid. She's going to have it all. She's going to do it all. Right after Marissa Meyer told all these stay, you know, after all these stay at home moms, let me rephrase that. Marissa Meyer didn't say anything to stay at home moms. After all these stay at home moms got upset, because Marissa Meyer told people to bring their asses to the office and stay-at-home and moms are like, oh my God, they're discriminating against you go girl Oprah, women like me who want to have a career and a baby. Now they're all just licking Marissa Meyer's ass because she's squeezing a puppy out of her vajayjay. When news of the pregnancy broke, TechCrunch pointed out that Meyer was the first ever pregnant CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Who gives, again, just the fascination with the hole between her legs? She's pregnant. Who gives a fuck? Get your ass to work. Nobody cares. Oh, you want special treatment? Oh, I'm sorry. Have you heard of gender equality? The Los Angeles Times wondered, 
quote, Will Marissa Meyer's high-profile pregnancy help end pregnancy discrimination? Unquote. As if pregnancy discrimination actually exists. In Forbes, Amy K- Kanishian wrote a story headlined, quote, The Pregnant CEO, Should You Hate Marissa Meyer? Unquote. She wrote, quote, I'm not going to pretend I could do what Marissa Meyer is doing. Unquote. What, spitting a baby out of your fucking hole between your legs? It's not that hard. Women have been doing it all around the world. Thousands of years. How would Meyer handle having a newborn while trying to turn around a multi-billion dollar public company? Well, she's going to do it the same way every other woman who thinks she can have a baby and a career does it. And you're about to find out what that methodology is. Some of her closest advisors found out on October 22nd, 2012. I don't need to read this. She did a 10-hour conference call with a bunch of people while her kid was in the room making noise. Because, of course, like all parents, she thinks because her baby is cute, she thinks everybody else wants to be subjected to her child. It's just like here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, dog owners. Dog owners who bring their dogs to work. It's like, look, I understand you are enamored with your dog and you think you're a dog mom and the dog is your fur baby and this is what you have in your life because you can't find a boyfriend or a husband and you can't have a child and so you're substituting the dog because you know you don't have a baby or a dick inside the hole that's between your legs. And so the dog is your substitute. I get that. But I don't want to see your fucking dog when I'm at work. I don't want to have to see or hear your fucking child when I'm at work. I am at work to do a fucking job and get paid for it. I am not here to put up with your fucking kids and your fucking dog. But hey, Marissa Meyer, she's a fucking mom and she's got a cool. She's going to bring her fucking kid to a 10-hour conference call. Meyer, Mayer, I keep calling her Meyer, Oscar Meyer Wiener, I don't know. Mayer made the baby raising part look easy. She took just a two week maternity leave. Then, two months after giving birth, Mayer told the audience at a conference on women in business, quote, the baby's been way easier than everyone made it out to be, unquote. What Mayer didn't say was that, thanks to her incredible wealth and power at Yahoo, she had a lot of help with McAllister. At home, she had a full-time staff. At Yahoo, she knocked down a wall in her office and set up a nursery so that McAllister and his nanny could come to the office with her every day. Yes! Boy, it sure is raising a kid and having a career when you have a full-time staff at home that cooks and cleans and does your child caring for you, and you have a full-time nanny that goes everywhere the kid goes. Yes, Marissa, having children and a career is so easy. It's, it's nothing to it. I mean, any woman can do this. Well, and no woman should need more than two weeks maternity leave. You didn't. I mean, you spit the puppy out. The fucking staff is right there to wash your little fucking vagina off with some nice warm towels and everything. Your nanny takes the baby and starts taking care of it. And you just stand there while everybody kisses your ass and tells you how wonderful you are. Oh, it's so easy. There's nothing to it. The comments upset a lot of women. Lisa Belkin of the Huffington Post, talk about journalist people who write with third grade reading level, wrote an open letter to Meyer in which she, which she said, quote, Dear Marissa Meyer, putting baby and easy in the same sentence turns you into one of those mothers we don't like very much. Other women were upset about the brevity of Meyer's maternity leave. They thought it set a bad example. In Slate, Alison Bendick wrote, quote, Meyer didn't just have foot surgery. She birthed a tiny human being, a baby who needs stuff, unquote. 
stuff. Yeah, so here, this is from the slate. So point number one is that the baby needs stuff, a little materialism for you. And let's remember that that same child, a couple of hours earlier, wouldn't have been a tiny human being at all. It would have been unviable tissue mass that Marissa Meyer could have aborted and flushed down the toilet. Anyway, Rachel Wilner of the San Jose Mercury News wrote that she was aching, quote, aching, unquote, for mayor. Quote, I know plenty of accomplished moms. Not one thought her months-long maternity leave was too lengthy. All were still discombobulated, sleep-deprived, and confused, if not clinically depressed, when they went back to work. Unquote. This is coming from a woman. And again, this is why. You can't have a kid and a fucking career. I know you think, because you have a fucking hole between your legs, just like the one between your ears. I know you women think you can do it all, that you can have this kid and just go right back to work. But no, as another woman said, the women she knew who had kids and went back to work even after months off were discombobulated, discombobulated, sleep deprived and confused. Of course, those women didn't have a full-time nanny and a full-time staff at home to make sure they never actually had to lift a finger to support themselves. These were women who were probably actually having to raise their own children, prepare the child's food, prepare their own food, maybe even prepare food for, God forbid, a husband. These women you know, might have actually had husbands or something. I don't know. Marissa Meyer has a husband. I'm just saying. The thing today is you go, girl. You can have a baby and a career, and you don't need a man. The whole topic gained a lot of extra heat because in the past, Meyer said, Mayor, fuck. Mayer said she was not a feminist and that she was, quote, blind to gender, unquote, which is also, that's a warrant. It's just like when somebody says that they're not racist, that means they're racist. When somebody tells you they're blind to gender, that's a fucking discriminator one way or the other. You've never heard me say I'm blind to gender. Have you ever heard me say that? You ever heard me say I don't judge people based on their gender? Goddamn right you haven't heard me say that, and I never will because I do. See, that's what honesty looks like. Women, I want a man who's honest. Oh, bullshit. You have, you fucking whores have no interest in honesty. Honesty is the last thing a woman wants from a woman. We've talked about that before. I don't need to go down that road. Meyer? Mayor, God damn it. Mayor, why you... Mayer addressed the issue at an FYI on April 19th, 2013, when McAllister was about six months old. She stood on stage, and on the giant screen behind her, there is a picture of her boy. There it is. I'm going to come to work and show everybody my baby pictures. All right, again, honey, this is a fucking job. I don't give a fuck that you're the CEO. Nobody here wants to see pictures of your fucking kid. Will you please fucking stop this shit? People do not, men are not at work to be friends with you and look at your fucking baby pictures. Men are at work to do work, to get paid money so they can take the money, leave work, and go do things they like doing with people they enjoy spending time with. Will you please take your baby pictures and shove them up your ass? She clip. oh, so this is a picture of my son, she said. Many of you ask me about him from time to time. He's very, very cute. He just got his first two teeth, and he's starting to crawl this week. Again, the delusion that women have that the whole world gives a fuck about their child. You know how many children there are on the planet? A bunch of them. There's going to be a bunch more. There's been a bunch in the past. Your fucking kid is not special. Will you please fucking stop? Just Stop. She clicked to the next picture. And this is what he looks like when he's surprised. Behind a giant picture of a very surprised looking baby. Mayer said she had a surprise for Yahoo. Which is another way of saying bend over. Because here it comes. Quote, I think that because I had only been here for 12 weeks, it wasn't really possible for me to take a maternity leave, which I was okay with. 
but one of the things that has bothered me is that I th is that I think internal to Yahoo and external to Yahoo people have gotten the impression I don't think maternity leave or paternity leave is important. Today we are happy to announce a new and improved maternity Today we are happy to announce new and improved maternity and paternity benefits here at Yahoo. Unquote. Mayer said that all new parents, surrogates, adopted, or whatever, would now get eight weeks of paid leave, and that new moms would get 16. Gender discrimination, but we're used to that. It says here, URLS, that's the name of the cafeteria, Earl's, Earl's, where the cafeteria at Yahoo where she had these meetings, Earl's broke into applause. Yeah, you see, that's, that's really applause worthy until you come to grips with a very important fact. Those 8 to and 16 weeks off that people would be getting without pay, while they're gone, somebody else has to do their job. Wonder who that's going to be. Primarily, who's going to follow? Oh yeah, it's ultimately going to fall upon all of the people who don't have children to do the jobs of the people who do have children when those people are taking their eight weeks or sixteen weeks off with pay. It's sort of like the income tax deduction for having children. You could say it's a deduction for people who have kids or you could just as equally and validly say that people who don't have children are paying additional taxes to make up for the people who do so yeah you could say that fathers are getting eight months I mean eight weeks of paid vacation paid I guess it's not technically vacation it's time off Fathers, what about gay couples? What if you have two women that are married and they have a baby? Do both the women get 16 weeks off because they're moms? Or does one of them only get 16 weeks and one only get 8 weeks? There's an interesting question. For the gender equalityist of the GLBT KKK. But look, when you're getting, when the parents are getting all this paid time off, well, the single people, the people who choose never to have children, they're never going to have access to this. And they're going to have to cover the bases when these people are gone. So yeah, that may sound all, oh, clap my hands, so wonderful. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch, people. No such thing as a free lunch. All the single people have to fucking pick up the slack on that. Alright, I know, we're getting low on time. Let me take a look at page 286 and see what's over here. 286. Ugh. Ugh. Alright, now I can't... No, oh, this is a long sequence. There's no way I can get this done. So that's just going to have to wait. You know what? I'm Randy, this is how much I love you. Let's just end early. Yes. Wait, I'm, I'm sure also that the listeners will not mind being cheated. Cheated. I say cheated. Or I could talk for two. What do you want? You want to end early? You know what? I'm going to talk for two minutes. Fuck you. <laughs> Ooh, college girls. Little college girl in the green shirt. So, all right, anyway. Whenever you you sign up for working at a corporation, remember too, when it's the same thing with retirement. You know, you see, and God, the corporate retirement packages are starting to crash and burn. We're starting to see this beginning to happen. Remember, when you, young people, I'm talking to you, you're going out into the world for the first time and you have this option to work at a corporation. Remember, all this free stuff you're getting from the corporation actually has to be paid for. In this book, they talk about how Marissa Myers gave Meyer, Mayer, God fucking damn it! Why can I not fucking talk? Where Marissa Mayer gave everybody, this is the quote from the book, free breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the cafeteria. 
free cell phones, free smartphones, because when she came in, everybody had Blackberries. She replaced all the Blackberries. And free computers. Okay, that stuff was not free. All of that had to be paid for out of the company's profits. That reduced the profits of the shareholders. It also reduced the amount of money the company has in the form of capital to hire more people, to do investing, to bring in other resources. Okay, And it's not free. So when you're talking to this corporation and they're trying to hire you, when they're telling you, oh, we give you free this and free that, it's free to you, sort of, but it's not free in the long run because the money that's used to give you these free things is money the company. And again, yes, the company doesn't give a shit about you, but you've got to keep them. So when the company says, oh yeah, we give moms 16 weeks of paid maternity leave. Well, instead of getting all excited about that, unless you're going to be a mom, then it's great. If you're not going to be a mother, that means for 16 weeks, you're going to be having to help pick up someone else's slack. For 16 weeks, you're going to, you're going to have to do extra productivity. Some money that could be yours is going to have to go to pay that person while she's not working. All of these benefits, these retirement benefits, right? You're, oh yeah, you work here for 30 years and you retire, get your full salary. Well, remember, they're paying all these people that have already retired their full salary. Well, where does the company get that money from? The only place it can get that money from is from the profits it's making right now. There's not a big savings account. So that means you have to work extra so that the retired people can get their fucking retirement benefits. And you have to hope the company is still around after you retire to keep giving you your retirement benefits. And they're still making a profit and all this other shit. So just think a little bit about the bullshit you hear about, oh, these are the benefits, and this stuff is all free, because there ain't no such thing as a free lunch.